long time coming to have a theater like this and an arc light in Santa Monica. Um, the, the need here in Santa Monica has been great for a new theater and we think we're bringing the best of sight and sound and uh, experience that LA has to offer right now and we're bringing it to the west side. Huge creative community here. And you know we love being a part of Santa Monica Place. Maestrich has been an exciting, you know, just excellent partner, and and so um, helpful and wanting to bring this this experience to the people of Santa Monica. So um, as most of you know, this um, our flight was was born here in Los Angeles. We are privately owned, family owned, LA based. Uh, the only exhibitor that is that is still LA based. And um, we're gonna, getting ready to celebrate our 14th anniversary in Arclight Hollywood in March. And Arclight Santa Monica is our 10th location. So a lot of celebration this week with this opening. Um, Chris Foreman, who is, who is our CEO, and is the third generation to run the theater business um, for the Foreman family. It's been in operation for about 70 years now. He is um, you know, really conceived of the idea of Arclight because He's a huge movie lover, hugely respectful of the art of, of filmmaking, and about 16 years ago, just thought there's gotta be a better way. There has to be, you know, people pour their hearts, their souls, their credit cards, their family's credit cards into these projects, and, and you know, they're, they're not being shown the way that they intended. And that's where the, art, the idea for Arclight really came from. Um, when we opened Arclight Hollywood, I know some of you said you've been fans since the, and um, we could have shot a cannon off. People thought we were crazy, reserve seating, what are we thinking? Because the big megaplex was really still in vogue at that time. And, um, but we really listened to what had stopped people from going to the movies and tried to address those things. And we'll take you through that, the Arclight experience today as we try to address the things that stopped people from coming to the movies. So um, today you're gonna get a taste of what it's like to purchase your ticket come into Arclight, what we have to offer, and then as Anya said, we'll give you a little sneak peek of some sight and sound, and then a tasting uh, sneak peek at what we have to offer with coffee, popcorn, and our concessions, and then our cafe and bar. So again, welcome, thank you for our being here. I'm gonna introduce Steve Green, our VP of Operations, and he's gonna start you on your journey. Hi everyone, uh, super excited to be uh, here opening an Arclight in Santa Monica where one really belongs. And, uh, I, just before I um, share a little bit about the lobby experience, and we're going to go stage by stage through uh, the whole journey uh, as a guest. I uh, just wanted to let you know who else is going to be talking today. So Michael Blazer here um, is, our, is our general manager for Arclight uh, Santa Monica. Michael, um, he's run Arclight Hollywood, he's run Arclight Sherman Oaks, he's run Arclight Pasadena, Culver City, anything on this stuff? All the hell all of LA. We haven't sent him a yet, but uh, Michael's um, got a lot of experience to bring to here. Uh, Joe Moralia, uh, here is our Director of Design, uh, Development and Construction, so has been responsible for um, you know, making the, the concept of Arclight come alive at multiple locations and has run the movie theaters himself with AMC quite previously. And Stephen Ramskill um, is our Head of Food and Beverage, um, and you also ran Arclight Hollywood for yeah, yeah, so a lot of uh, experience. I personally have only been in the company for four and a half years, um, but it's been a, a, a wonderful journey. Um, and, uh, you know, we all learn together. Uh, so what I want to, uh, to, to introduce here is the, what, what guests experience walking into the lobby. And, you know, you're all in the lobby now. Um, what we want to create is a place of belonging where movie lovers feel they belong. Um, and for that, we want to take all the hassles and distractions out of the way. Um, and that's what Chris Foreman's uh, concept was and the focus groups, etc., have meant that we've, we've removed some things. So start off with ticketing. There is no box office. Uh, so we've removed the box office entirely because we want to take the lines, the weight, the kind of frustration, you know, where am I going to sit? We have reserved seating. Um, so uh, to get your tickets, any any place you can do it online before you join, we have mobile apps. 
for both Google and iPhone, um, Android and iPhone, I should say. Uh, so you can have a seamless experience before you even come here to search show times and you know, sign up for membership if you want and, uh, and, and get a dollar off as you purchase and select your, your seat. So that's the ticketing. Um, and then you know, we obviously have um, kiosks, uh, we call it the guest bar, and we also have mobile tablets that will be around if you want to pay cash, etc. And it, if that, you know, we also have any, any point of sale system can sell it, sell it. So that's ticketing. Um, and then, you know, some people want to wait for friends. So we have a, uh, a gift shop area here um, where we, we tend to just highlight um, something that's connecting people to film. People can browse. It's more like a museum space than, you know, we're not too concerned whether people buy or not, but there might be something delightful that they, that they find that is a memorable memorabilia of their experience. Um, and that, for Star Wars, as you can imagine, is going to be a, uh, an interesting spot for people to, to browse by because we're going to have, have some great products that people will want to connect with. Um, so again, we can feature it for any, any kind of movie experience. And also at the gift shop, um, we have now gift cards. You'll see in these uh, lovely uh, envelopes. Um, so typically for the holidays, some, some themes that could work for different people. Um, and, and those gift cards are now available to be uh, both purchased and and then redeemed online even. So you can still get the, the seamless experience online of getting your ticket on your phone and not having you know really to stop anywhere apart from just scanning it with the ticket And finally I should mention the whole area of, of, of gifts is you can give a gift to yourself or art like membership or a gift to, to someone else because our membership program it's uh, fifteen dollars for an entire year but with that as I said, you're going to get a dollar off each time you reserve online. Um, you're going to get two tickets straight out off the bat to our Arclight Presents series where you know, Gretchen and her team curate uh, some of the classics that they, we bring back and some documentaries and some edgier product that you may not see on the screen otherwise. Um, and then there's also earning and redeeming points like any usual uh, membership program. So that's from ticketing to the gift experience. And then, obviously people want to connect to what's, what's, what's my options tonight if they haven't made a choice, right? And this is our departure board, which is styled on you know, Grand Central Station kind of experience of being there. Maybe it's a bit like Union Station in LA, but it's essentially like a, a train station to say, well, here's my choices of journeys. And Gretchen's gonna talk about the different choices that we have at Arclight. You know, what, what's the adventure I wanna take? Today. And then we should be able to you know, help you just move through whatever experience you want to have that evening um, and get out of the way as much as possible so it can be as the film is. So I'll hand back to Gretchen to talk about our program and what's, what's actually the content on the, the departure board and, and in the field. So, so somebody asked me today if I could, you know, two things that I, I think really set our flight apart. And, uh, the first one Stephen's going to touch on, which is the cafe bar uh, experience that's that's new and different. But the second one is definitely programming, and, and Arclight is the only uh, exhibitor that mixes big blockbuster films. Uh, we play Spider-Man, we play Avengers, um, with specialty film, with uh, the Arclight Presents curated series, and that's 52 weeks a year. We don't we don't do it only when it's convenient, only when we have space. Um, a lot of theaters go to that concept after you know things are getting a little rough, so we'll make it an art house. And there's just been this divide uh, historically in the industry, and, and our play, we feel like whether you love Avengers, whether you want to see Spotlight, or whether you want to see you know the latest documentary, you should be able to see it in the same atmosphere. So you'll see that mix of programming um, um, all the time, and. You know, as Steve said, we want this to be a place where film lovers belong, where people appreciate film, and there's opportunity to have a deeper discussion or look into film. And in case you missed Katniss when uh, when you walked in, uh, we have our our storyboard, which changes all the time. Um, sometimes, like right now, it's one huge image from a film. Um, you might come in in a couple weeks, and it's all Disney classic individual one sheets. We just did. We just opened. Um, 
a new theater and we had all of the James Bond international film uh, one sheets historically um, on the one. So sometimes that, those were all individual pieces. It's not digital, but people ask a lot. But, um, you know, so it's, it changes every three to four weeks and we want it to be something that really you know, wows them, interests them, but it'll always be something different um, as you come through. And then the other thing, um, the other things I want to point out, again, just as, as something unique to our client and something that we want to give our guests is, is that deeper look into the film. We often have um, behind the scenes photography, costumes, we'll have set pieces, and those will also rotate through the theaters every three or four weeks. And I, mean, I just, I just, this is one of my favorites. There's, we have Danish Girl here, and we have it at Arclight Hollywood. In Arclight Hollywood, they have their going their evening costumes, and here their day wear. But it's just and those are those are what they wore in the film, and you know, some, and some photography. But just you know, something gorgeous that you're not going to see anyplace else. And you'll you'll hopefully see you'll see artwork by local artists that we curate here in Los Angeles, and specifically in Santa Monica. And you'll see some of that throughout. And then as you come back to the theater, you'll see different exhibits as you can adventure through the theater. And like Steve said, we like that. People hanging out, meandering, you know, just giving you a reason to kind of slow down and enjoy the day. And then Stephen has a lot more reasons for you to sit down and enjoy the day once you're here. This is going to take us through uh, our food and beverage offering. Should we check it? So my name is Stephen Ramskill. Um, I said I oversee our food and beverage operations and just excited and uh, thrilled to have you join us today to take you on the Arclight journey at Arclight Santa Monica. Uh, the food and beverage offering for Arclight is an integration of both our cafe bar and following our auditorium experience today we're going to come back and as Gretchen mentioned we're going to share some samples of our food offering and talk about some of our signature cocktails and, and local draft beers. But the other part of our food and beverage offering is our food and beverage stand. Um, so I just want to kind of share some highlights around our food and beverage offering here at the stand. The first thing I hope you notice is we're very intentional about our design. Uh, we're really about creating engagement with our guests, creating engagement with one another. So we look to remove any barriers through the design of our stand as much as we can to create that very open and inviting space. As well as obviously building and designing a stand that's efficient for us to be able to take care of our guests very timely uh, and have our guests be able to move along and enjoy the movie. As far as our offering, um, we're also very intentional that everything goes back to preserving the movie viewing experience. And how can we set the stage that when you're in your seat in the auditorium, you're ready to immerse yourself in the movie you've come to see. So with that, we've been very intentional around our packaging to remove any potential distractions inside the auditorium. So we use popcorn tubs instead of the popcorn bags, which usually create the rustling effect when you're diving in to get your popcorn. <laughs> Um, and we're also mindful around our packaging as far as concessions, uh, candies as well. So we carry a lot of the typical movie going fair with our pop dogs and popcorn, but we also have our Arclight signature popcorn, which is made in-house freshly every day by our crew. Uh, we also offer gourmet baguettes. Uh, it's kind of an extension of a way to start integrating into the cafe experience by enhancing the, the food and beverage stand offering. And one thing I'm, I'm really pleased that we were able to bring into Arclight last year, starting with some of our other locations, is at our concession stand, you can now purchase a, a pint of beer or a glass of wine and take that into any auditorium and enjoy it with your movie. Obviously, we have a full bar we'll talk about, but as far as the concessions experience, we have beer and wine available as well for our guests. Um, also, a couple of other items to mention is we have our fresh fruit smoothies. So you can get strawberry or mango smoothies from our smoothie machine. And then again, we cover some other items as well as gourmet pretzels, uh, the baguettes which we mentioned, uh, and then a variety of both carbonated and non-carbonated beverages uh, for our guests to enjoy during their movie experience. And that relaxing, and Greg, Auer Greg Auerbach is our artist um, that we're currently featuring. He's here in Los Angeles. And I don't know, I mean, they're fabulous, the pieces and so on. But this space can be used for fine art, for exhibits, like we spoke about in the front. So we have one here, and then there's, you'll see another another space down here. But he's just got fabulous pieces. That's even cool. So, you know, being in the auditorium is what it's about. It's why we're here. Um, Stephen and Joe are going to take you through the details of our sight and sound and then our auditorium experience. Well, you're, you're here at the main game. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, how many auditoriums we have, the sort of kind of space situation and the concept of what we're trying to create in the auditorium. And Joe, um, who's put in a lot of the technology here, 
study went on details, um, and, and we'll wrap that up before we actually look at something on screen and you get to experience it, what, it, what it's really all about. Um, so we have 12 auditoriums uh, in this location. Um, two of them, uh, this one and uh, House 1, so House 7 and 1, have, have Dolby Atmos sound, which you'll hear more about from Joe. Um, but every, every seat is a good seat, every seat's a reserved seat, the sight lines are, are all, um, you know, very carefully crafted and Joe can talk to that. Um, the concept is really black box, um, because again, we don't want anything in the way of your experience and what the filmmaker intended uh, for you to experience and, and, and whatever, um, you know, we say you can find yourself in a movie, you can lose yourself in a movie, we want that opportunity to be available. Um, so we want to take all the distractions out. So everything would go completely dark, um, apart from obviously the safety um, uh, lightings on, on, the, on, the, on the side there. We have muted colors, soft tones, you'll notice um, you know, it's a little bit of music. Um, and we usually just have, have a, a, a stylized uh, logo that's a little blurry on the screen. Um, before, you know, then all the technology can come to bear. So maybe uh, you talk about that, Joe, and then I'll kind of start with how, how we leave people into the experience of Korea. So this is our widescreen auditorium. The screen is uh, basically floor and ceiling and, and wall to wall, which is a little bit different experience than some of the other auditoriums who maintain um, uh, different sets of sight lines. So this is uh, for the immersive type of film. In this auditorium, we have our Dolby Atmos system. And you can see the surround speakers, they actually follow along the same uh, line, even with the stage speakers. So the idea is that as the uh, sound comes off the screen, it tracks along each of these speakers individually addressable. And the filmmaker will have, has all the authority to direct where they want sound to go to. And then you also see those two rows of speakers above you. So any of those, you can hear the sound not only around you, but they can individually address those. And then there are two low frequency drivers with big boxes on the side for low frequency. So you get a full range of sound no matter where you're at in the auditorium. And there's two auditoriums equipped um, with that technology. Um, the projection equipment is uh, uh, two 4K uh, digital projectors. And we have two 4K projectors here, which is uh, for the amount of creating enough light on the screen. Uh, we're projecting in Dolby 3D. Um, so we're able to keep a white screen um, as, opposed to, as opposed to a silver screen, which you see at some of the yeah. other theaters, where sometimes we get some, get some hot spotting, what we call it technically in the IR industry. This auditorium is outfitted with a Meyer sound system and has 79,000 watts of peak power. So that's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, headroom in here. Not that we're wanting to blast you out, but that it didn't have the ability to. These speakers, uh, 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 fun fact, they're manufactured here in California, up in Northern California and Berkeley. Um, all the components and the, the amplifiers are actually located inside the speaker. Something very unique about um, our light uh, here. Um, that's just in this auditorium, right? Just the, in this auditorium. Have... the other ones have JBL uh, speakers with uh, crown amplifiers. Uh, you know, five auditoriums with uh, 3D. We use Dolby 3D here. In the the Christie is our projector manufacturer. It has the highlights of the projection system. Yeah, so that's what uh, people will be experiencing right after, you know, they come in here, relax, unwind. Um, we, uh, we don't allow people to come in late once something's on screen, because it, you know, it, and that's usually like seven minutes, because there's, there's no commercials. There's just three previews. Um, of, of upcoming attractions, and then it's straight on screen. So, you know, of course we look after people and we help them move to a different show time, or, um, you know, we, we, we accommodate if there's only one person sitting over there, we might be able to get someone in and, you know, make an exception, but we don't want people also to miss out on uh, the experience and seeing the movie end to end. Um, and then, you know, so with all of that said, we have a live person greeting every show. Even if you're the only person sitting in the auditorium, you'll have someone, one of our crew members, dressed like the vet here. Um, and, and, and we should. We'll, we'll, we'll come and simply 
uh, welcome you, make you feel welcome um, again to the place of belonging. Um, we'll uh, ask that you, you know, minimize distractions or eliminate distractions um, to yourself or anyone else with um, obviously phones off and the usual not talking, etc. But we don't put it up on screen as a sign. We actually talk to people about it and set those expectations. And then, um, and, and, and indicating that we'll, 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 we'll be checking sight and sound quality and we will be popping back uh, every so often, which we do, um, to uh, check on the experience and that everyone's fully engaged. Uh, one thing we practice at Arclight Chicago, um, which we just opened for the Bond movie recently, um, was that when uh, doing auditorium checks, uh, the person coming in would then announce on the radio um, that everything's up to quality three, we call it. We have one, two, and three to just rate our standards. And quality three meaning that everyone is fully engaged with the film. Um, and and if, if something's off, we can obviously talk to people if they're distracted or if they're talking or something and just um, get that back up to that to that, uh, to that level, because that's, that's what we're trying to offer as a, an experience. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the food and beverage offering at Arclight Cinemas is a combination of both our concession stand and, and the cafe bar. And for me, the cafe bar really is an extension of building community with our members, moviegoers. Uh, I like to see it as a place for people to say, hey, you know, let's, let's meet at the bar before our movies. Um, in the past, before bars, we'd be waiting outside, I'd meet you in the lobby. But now it's a place where we can come and meet each other before movies, a place to come and enjoy a cocktail after the movie. So maybe wait for the parking structure to die down, engage around the enjoyment of the movie rather than having that conversation on your way to the car. So it's really a place in which people can meet, build community with family, friends, or start to meet fellow moviegoers and just engage in you know, the movies together. Uh, as far as our offering for the cafe bar, um, it's really centered around our cocktails, our local beers, and our wines. And with that, we have a, a menu that's made up of uh, small share plates, um, appetizer dishes that really complement the overall bar cocktail experience. Uh, and again, as with the concessions offering, our guests can take any drink into the auditorium. So you can enjoy it at the bar with Matt and Swins, our bartenders, enjoy it in our lounge area, and we do have some more soft furnishing coming into this space as well. Or you can just enjoy your drink inside the auditorium during your movie going experience. So with that said, Matt and Swins, we do have some signature cocktails here at Arclight. One is the Arclight Hollywood. Uh, the other is the Audrey Hepburn. So Matt and Swins are gonna make a couple of cocktails up. Um, and Matt, I think, is just going to say a few words about our overall uh, bar offering. We try to have some cool, interesting cocktails, good ingredients. Uh, try, to, try to mix it up and do things centered around movies and centered around different uh, things coming out. Uh, the Arclight Hollywood that I'm making um, is kind of a riff on the blue Hawaiian. It's in martini form. It's tasty, it's very sweet. He's working on one of our most popular cocktails, Audrey Pepper. Uh, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a tall cosmos, a tall cosmo, but delicious. But we can do everything. We, we we know how to make pretty much whatever you want. So if you ever want to quiz us or you know try to like teach us something new, even and then we can do it. If you have any suggestions on stuff, try to like work it out and make stuff happen. So if you need anything, let us know. We're gonna work on things right now. Welcome. Thanks. And as Matt mentioned, we like to tie in of being a movie theatre, so we work with our studios and look for opportunities to tie in special cocktails, special drinks that go with the theme of the movie. So for Spectre that recently opened, we had the, the Bond and Belvedere cocktails, and leading up to the holiday period, we'll be introducing some movie themed cocktails here at Arclight Santa Monica. Uh, and the other thing to note, we really like to work with local breweries, either Southern California or even local to the market. So I'm pleased to say what we're partnering with Santa Monica Brewing Company. Um, they're going to be our rotational tap for the first several months. So every four to six weeks, we'll introduce a new beer from Santa Monica Brewery. And they'll also have a, a permanent tap as well here in Arcade Santa Monica. Um, and then we also have a partnership with Stone and we uh, introduce some of Stone Brewery's uh, beers here at the location. Uh, and again, we have a variety of wines as well, both reds, whites, and champagne. And there's uh, Matt already spoke to a wide variety of spirits to make your favorite cocktails or try some new cocktails that we have on our menu. So with that, I'd also like to talk a little bit about our food option. As I mentioned, we've really designed a food menu that complements the, the bar cocktail experience um, and building community. So share plates, appetizers, 
Um, so we have a selection of items here that we've brought out for you to take pictures of. And I'd like to hand you over to Eric Barron, he's the head chef for Arclight Cinemas, and just to talk to you about a few of the dishes we have here today. Yeah, thank you for coming this morning, appreciate your time. Uh, this is basically a sampling of our current menu. Uh, Stephen mentioned everything is pretty much quick serve. Uh, we make a lot of these things fresh and in-house. Uh, some of our feature items are like uh, ahi tuna poke, which features uh, sashimi grade ahi tuna. Our most popular dish being the popcorn chicken. Like, as you can see, we have little twists on things like uh, chicken wings, for example. It's not your typical buffalo wing. We do a sweet Thai chili sauce to kind of spice it up and add a little variety to it. But feel free to take pictures. Uh, we're going to pass around some samples of these dishes for you guys. So I'm going to go back in the kitchen and grab some of the food and help yourself to some pictures or questions. Thanks, Eric. And, and just one final thing I wanted to mention is the, um, the food from the cafe is to be enjoyed in the cafe lounge space. Um, we're really focused on preserving the movie viewing experience. Um, so whilst from a food and beverage stand you can take in popcorn and the regular movie fare, uh, our guests enjoy the cafe food in the, in the cafe environment. Um, that really allows you then when you move, go into the auditorium or your fellow moviegoers to have the full focus on the movie viewing experience and remove any potential distractions that come from the consumption of food inside the auditorium. Um, so as Eric said, we're going to bring some food out for you to try. Matt and Swins are at the bar if you care for a drink, water, coffee, or if you care to try one of our signature cocktails, they'll happily take care of you. And, and again, thank you for joining us today at Outside Santa Monica.